Hi everyone, in this video we will cover REST API HTTP methods. Before that, we will also cover how to add libraries from Python setting. Then we will create automation framework for REST API automation. Then we will cover different HTTP methods and also we will cover get request using robot REST API automation. In that, we will send the get request, we will get the response and we will then validate that response. For this, go to the PyCharm. Here, we will create one project for our REST API automation. So, click on File, then click on New Project, enter any name here, and then click on Create. Delete this file, which is automatically created. Now we will cover how to add libraries using Python setting. Go to File, click on Settings or Account. Go to Project, then click on Python Interpreter. And here, click on Plus I. Here, you can give any library name that you want to install. Just select and click on install package button. So in this way, you can also add libraries. So one way is to use the terminal and this is the another way. Now we will create automation framework for REST API automation using robot framework. So first, I will create a one directory for our API. Also, I will create one directory for UI. Then I will create one directory for utilities. And then I will create one directory for variables. Inside API, I will create three more directories. One I will create for common. One I will create for tests. And the last one I will create for utilities. Now inside common we can create different robot files. So I will create one robot file inside common. Then I will create one more file for URL constraints. And last I will create one file for constants. Now inside test I will create one robot file. Here we will write our code. Now by default we have settings section, test cases section and keyword section. So here we will give the description of our test cases. Also in the settings section we need to specify the libraries and resources that are required for the execution. So we will use different libraries like collections, then string, then request library and JSON library. So we have imported all the required libraries that is required for the execution of our get request test case. In this test case we will not require keywords so I will remove this. Now we can give 
some tag name for this test case. Then we will write our test case. Now go to this URL. Here on request response dot in we have number of different APIs that we can use for our automation. So we have different get, post, put, patch, delete. Different APIs are there which we can use for REST API automation. So first we will see a get request. So here we have this request. Now as you can see this is the base URL and then we have this endpoint. So using this request we have this response here. So now we will see this how we can automate this same in PyCharm. Now we will start with our test case. So first we will need our base URL. So for that we will create a variable section and inside there we will declare our base URL. Once this is done, now we will start with our test cases. So first thing we need to create is session for this request. Now to create session, we will write create session, session name, base URL and to disable the warnings, we will write disable underscore warnings equal to 1. Now as you can see, this is our endpoint. So we will copy this endpoint. And then we will create one variable for this end. So we have created one variable named endpoint for this endpoint. Just make sure to give some spacing between these names. So at least you should give four spaces, or you can use a tab to separate this. Now we will perform gate action. So we will write get on session, session name, and endpoint, and we will store this in response object. Now we have written log to console response dot headers response dot status code and response dot content. So this will log the response or headers response status code and response content in the terminal or in the console, and this log will write the same thing in the report. Now we will cover how we can validate this response. So first thing we will check whether the response given is 200 or not. So we will check for the status code first. So for that we will convert our response into string and then we will check our status code is 200 or not. For this, we need to write status code equals to convert the response into the string and then we are converting the status code that we are getting to the string and then we are checking if that is equal to 200 or not. And these things like should be equal, should be empty, should not be empty. These are in the built-in, in the robot framework. Then we will validate the body. Now we can see the response here. So we will validate the same using PyCharm. So we will check if the value of page is true or not in the response using robot framework. For that, we will convert our response.content into string and that we will store in this variable. Then we will get the response value using a JSON path. We will calculate the response of one of the field. Then we will again convert that into the string and using this remove string using regular expression, we will remove the square brackets and then we will check for the equality if the content is true or not. So, we will verify whether it returns to or not at this position. We can perform the same operation in postman. So, as you can see, we have this URL. Then, after clicking on send button, 
we got this response also we can check the headers here now we can also validate our response using header here you can see the content type as application json so we can validate the response using content type field also now to validate that we have created one variable header value and as the uh, response for of header is in key value pair so we will check for the content type and then we want the output as application json char set utf8 so for that we have used dictionary here and it is in the collections it belongs to the collections in the robot framework now we will try to execute this test case for that open terminal then click on robot api slash test slash define so we need to give the complete path over file then just click on enter so as you can see as we have written log to console it has return the headers then the response code and then the contents that is the response body and it, it has also validated the different conditions and the test case is passed now again we will walk through this test case so just one correction give proper name of json library so json is in capital here then also we need we have mentioned page path here so this is the json path and this is the value of this json path to get this just go to the then here give all the response and from here you can get the different json path for this example we have taken the value of page so for that we have written dollar dot page if we want to get the value of per page we can write it as per page so as you can see the value is varying here in this way we can find out the json path of our response then from the beginning we have created the session to disable the warning we have used disable warnings equal to one we have created the endpoint for one variable then we have created the session and then we have executed our get request then we have logged the headers status code and content on console and then also we have written the same thing on the report and then we have performed different validations like we have checked whether the status code is 200 or not then whether the content body contains true or not for the page for this path and then we have also verified whether the header contains the value application json or not for the content type so in this way we have uh, executed the get request using robot framework and also we got this log.html output.xml and report.html open this with any browser now you can see this is our test report here we can get the report as well as the log file so this is uh, really useful for logging and for debugging purposes